Hey everyone, I hope you guys are enjoying the free title update DLC for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, as today we're going to be checking out a brand new developer interview that was originally posted in the Capcom website and was officially translated by them. So we're not going to be doing any actual manual translating this time around. And what we're going to be discussing is the newly introduced followers mechanics and how it is that the developers basically decided to come up with them and more importantly, what their roles are set to fulfill according to the developers themselves. And as per always, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below for the actual article, uh, which was actually done by Koichi Shibata. And this time he's going to be discussing matters with Young Yil Lee, the lead producer for the followers that were introduced in Sunbreak. And the first question is more of an introduction. They asked to start off, could you give us a quick explanation as to what you worked on in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak? The response is, I'm the lead designer for the followers. I'm in charge of gameplay ideas, content, and production of anything follower related. As they continued, how was this completely new element implemented into the game? And the response was, it started with Yoshitake Suzuki, the director, saying that he wanted to have a sort of buddy hunter that would fight alongside the player. So we threw lots of ideas around and we figured that it would be the most fun to hunt together with the characters that appear in the world of Monster Hunter. And they wouldn't just be characters that you would be fighting alongside with, but they would be actively joining in other elements in the hunt as well. And that's how we ended up with the concept of followers. We tried out a lot of gameplay ideas as well. Ultimately, we wanted players to feel the real connection between these characters. So we added dialogue to the start and the end quest, and even conversations between the followers to give them more life for each of the characters. And that's pretty much right in line with one of the previous developer interviews that we went over where the development basically suggested that they wanted to bring along some of the characters that they had made memorable in Monster Hunter Rise, basically Minoto and Hinoa. They wanted players to have more of a better connection with those characters outside of Komura Village. And one of the places that you got to see them do that was in the Rampage and the original Monster Hunter Rise. So when it came to Sunbreak, they needed to figure out a way to be able to have those characters that they were going to be introducing there to be able to come with you alongside a hunt. And this where the followers idea came about. The next question reads, looking at the comments and social media, there seems to have been a lot of positive feedback from players who like the fact that the followers help out by healing you or placing traps and that they're very reliable on how actively they attack the monsters. How do you feel about this? The response was, we received a lot of positive feedback than we expected, so we're very happy. Players have been putting up lots of clips and screenshots, not just of fights with monsters, but just posting with their favorite characters, or just getting into all kinds of fun hijinks with their followers as well. So we've been greatly enjoying watching what people are up to. We're very grateful that people are having so much fun with this feature. Followers aren't just inorganic robots. They're unique characters with each of their own strengths and weaknesses. You can see this followers information screen by looking at their hunting styles, their skills, and their available weapons, but also by looking at how they behave during hunts. For instance, Admiral Gallius may look like he doesn't have a particular kind of hunting behavior, but he's actually very frequently used as healing items, ailment cleansing items, and buffing items during combat. This, combined with the wide range skill, makes him a great asset to players' teams providing valuable support. I guess my only real pushback to this specific quote would be the fact that uh, based on some of the numbers that we have seen, some of the DPS numbers we have seen uh, basically for the followers themselves, it seems like they don't actually do a lot of damage while they are extremely supportive. This is why a couple of weeks back I made a video uh, basically talking about how Hinoa and Minoto using a hunting horn are basically the best followers to bring along with you for multiple reasons. Not only because they use the horns to buff you and basically all your palicos and palamutes as well, and themselves alongside that and their palamutes alongside that as well. So everyone is getting buffed. But on top of that, they do plenty of KO damage and they love to get knockdowns and staggers. So that is a huge benefit to bring along with you. Whereas more of the DPS focused hunters don't necessarily bring much to the table other than Luchika, which of course we all know that she's kind of crazy and an amazing supporter to bring along with the underlying factor that she basically doesn't necessarily does a lot of healing or support or anything like that. She just focuses on the combat side of things. And the last question that they posted was, 
Was there anything you were very particular about when implementing the followers? The response was, the two key terms were likable characters and similar feel to multiplayer. In order to make these quests feel like multiplayer, we were very particular about giving followers a natural behavior. We didn't just want them to think that they were fighting alongside AI, but we wanted these characters to actually be reliable in combat. If you have them repeat the same determined behavior over and over, it won't feel natural and it'll just feel like you're being accompanied by a robot. So we made sure that sometimes they'll just run around and carefully avoid the monsters while healing, to make them feel more as if you're playing with hunters in multiplayer. It's easy to make an NPC that can just destroy everything, but the key to making it feel as if they're actually fighting along with you is to have them behave realistically, which was a lot of hard work, but it was worth it. The ultimate goal of followers was for the players to get the most engrossed in the story and the world interacting with these characters. So after we managed to get them and behave realistically, we focused on showing unique personalities in combat. Based on the character settings, we decided which weapons they would be able to use, what kind of items they'd use the most, what kind of actions they'd be able to perform, and each follower has their own charm and flavor. Especially when taking on two followers with you, there are some fun conversations and the way they respond to gesture and poses or just hanging around is really fun. So there's more to it than just seeing how they behave in action, we hope everyone picks their favorite characters and enjoys taking them out on hunts. And while I do think that, you know, Hino and Minoto are the best followers to bring along with you on a hunt, I do certainly encourage everyone to try out the other followers as well. Uh, I saw a lot of people basically mention that, um, Master Usushi also using a hunting horn is pretty good because he's more offensively focused. So if you're more interested in having a hunting horn damage user, uh, he's pretty good as well. Again, my only real, I guess, drawback would be the fact that the damage dealing ones aren't necessarily all that, you know, really helpful. I think the more defensive ones are, are a little bit helpful, but more relying on support followers. I think it's a really good way to go about it. And it does make me wonder, and this is something that I touched upon in that video that I made a couple of weeks back, it does make me wonder just how far they're actually going to take this idea going forward. Would they actually go fully all out in the next Monster Hunter game and basically just give you a full on, you know, single player experience with the understanding underlying, you know, ability that you are still playing with like, you know, AI characters, but it feels more like you're playing online with just, you know, single player characters from the story. That would be an interesting way to actually for them to choose to go about it and make the single player hunt that you're actually doing by yourself before you get ready for end game online a little bit more approachable for those players who just want to focus on single player. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.